close up. Good. So you would want you it higher? Yeah, that would be good. Can you use that? Maybe? Use what? This cage. I don't know. Maybe not. I'm just not sure how to hold it. It would be good to have. Oh, a tripod. I wonder if I have one of those. I'll go look. Oh, I just oil on it. So you need to inspect very carefully the condition of that that shaft. There you go. You gotta clean this oil mess I just made on the Hailing. In June. I heard somebody at work call it January. Uh, well, keep going. Let's see here. I don't think those needle bearings are going to come out with it situated the way it is because surface tension will hold them into the. There you go. That's plenty. That's plenty. I think so. This is probably the bearing surface of the of the shaft. So just want to wipe that off and kind of see what it looks like. I think it looks good. Oh, I don't see any wear on it. Since the shaft is held in a specific position, it would be evident the where um, the leg gear is pressed down. So if you imagine gear forces along this main, step this way just a second. So if you imagine here we have the main shaft come straight down like this. Yeah. And then underneath it is the lay shaft yep. supporting the leg gear and the leg gear spins and power transfer mm -hmm. goes from the input shaft to the leg gear and then it's picked up by gear one, gear two, gear three. Mm -hmm. So the force transfer goes down and then back up. In both cases, mm -hmm. the tendency when you apply power to that system is to drive the lay shaft down, to drive the lay gear down onto the lay shaft and the lay shaft down into the case. So oftentimes the lay shaft will develop play such that, the, um, such that it bores into the case further in a downward direction, away from the force uh, that's being applied by the the main shaft gears or the input shaft gear on the front and since all the torque of the engine comes through the the main of the lay since all the torque of the engine comes through the input shaft here it's the first thing and it presses down pretty hard so a lot of times you'll see a transmission where it doesn't have a bearing a radially supporting bearing it just has a hole in the in the case but that hole will be oblong either here or at the bottom 
Now, once you've established that the, the case is good, you know, there's not a lot of play in that um, hole that's holding the lay shaft in place. Well, then you have to determine is the lay shaft itself warm? Now, you can't see it, so it's going to be obviously difficult to construct a model in your mind, but that lay gear in there is hollow and the shaft runs through it. And at each end of the lay gear, there are a series of needle roller bearings. And those needle roller bearings are positioned around the yeah it's like a cylinder a long skinny cylinder almost like pencil lead and it's parallel to the shaft correct and there are a whole they bunch of them they're, they're fully packed in there there's a little bit of space okay but there's no carrier like when you look at a, a conventional ball bearing in between each ball there's a separating concave yeah. part of a cage and that cage rotates with the wheels rotates with the balls and holds them in place there's no such thing on the new loose needle bearings that make up the the lay gear supports on the lay shaft. So those needle rollers are kind of free to do whatever they want, and they're long enough that they stay in line, and they're fully lubricated. But they can bore themselves into the lay shaft, causing the shaft to have like a step in it or something in extreme cases. But yeah, I mean that side looked really good. I didn't see any witness marks on it from those needle bearings. Of course we were taking into account the thickness of the flange that, that holds, right? So the, I think I think we got enough of the wear that was visible. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you want to do the same thing. You want to drive it down and see, you know, how far does it... Well, when you get it out a certain amount, how does it look under there? Oh, I should put a, um, a cover over that or something. Because if a whole bunch of crap starts falling, if you can put that in this tray. Yeah. Nothing else is going to fall. Well, the lay, the lay shaft may fall out. So this is a two person job. If I you think don't so. Else. Do yeah. you want to hammer or do you want to hold what the. I will hammer. Okay. It oh. could get very loose all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so just look at it. Do you have enough light? No. Okay, so try to determine to what extent the needle bearings have impressed themselves into the shaft. Is there a paper towel? Sure. Oh, the aluminum boss is much deeper than I thought it was. We we didn't even see the area where the needle bearings roll. We're not even out of the woods yet in terms of the... This um, has somewhere... Let me take... Oh, I don't have my phone. You should definitely take a picture. I'll grab your phone. I don't... I plugged it in because it was so bad. Too. Seventeen percent, that's pretty low. Well it was at nine when I just plugged it in. Nice. So. Don't hurt yourself now. Got insects. What? Oh, what did you jump for? Did an insect jump on you? No, this So I, I can't see where the bottom of the case opening is. I can almost imagine it's about a quarter inch further. So you'll want to pull the shaft down another quarter inch plus the thickness well, of... There's this hole. Oh, look at that. That's going to be an oiling hole, which permits the passage of oil and we would need to make sure it's cleaned out. I would say pull it down a little bit further and um, I'll just look up from here. If it turns out that the, the bearings fall, they go all over the place and we have to take the whole thing apart, which, you know, it's not the end of the world. How's that? We haven't yet left the plant, the supported uh, part of the case. I'm really surprised. Okay, we just did. Is that okay? Yeah. It's not wanting to fall. 
Okay, so you go ahead and drop it down, and I'll tell you when to stop with the drop. Okay, stop. Um, the shaft oh, is better right here. These needles actually have a cage. I'm surprised. Can you take pictures, please? Yeah. Um, I was wrong about this. I was thinking it was going to be like a Triumph or a Jaguar transmission. It's not. It's actually a much better setup. Oh. Uh, which is really cool. The, uh, the plastic hardened up again on this box. Plastic. Uh... The lacquer thinner box. Oh, really? Okay, so if you take a look at this. Can I put it back up? Yeah, you've looked at all the surfaces. I need to take another picture, maybe, but I got. For I the need camera to here, I don't know the, if this works. Can you hold the light down here? Because I can't hold the thing and take a picture and the light. Sure. Uh, yeah. I'll just take one big too. Okay, I have the shaft. Yeah, it looks, looks really good. Yeah, I'm so surprised. Okay, now we are putting it back. Yeah, you're sliding it up, and you're going to do the same thing the other direction. But in the other direction, we're going to have to push it much further, actually. Now, as you go up, you run the risk of those needle bearings falling, falling into the center. Did you see the picture I showed? Um, let's see. The camera app is super slow. It's craziness. Okay, here is the picture. So it's not just needle rollers next to each other. There's a separating uh, cage or something, which is really quite nice. Okay. Can I have I'm hand very hand? impressed. Hmm? Can I have a hammer? Yeah. Probably need the lighter hammer. If, if that's going to be a problem, then we get to get the lighter can hammer. Can you watch the top? Yep, I am. So you're going to have to go up as least as, at least as far Okay, so now I would just say just like push. It changed. Yeah, well. Let me, let me get a picture of this. You probably came out of the aluminum housing and are now just free floating in the bearings and whatever resistance is up here in the, this top aluminum fit. Right, so, so now you're out of the aluminum. Hold that up to the camera so they can see it. Yeah, so there you can see the aluminum housing. There's some scoring or wear marks on the housing itself, but it doesn't look really bad. If the whole thing was super shiny, that would be a bad sign. Um, how do I know this uh, needle bearing's not going to fall out? We don't. What happens if they do? Then we take the transmission apart. Which we might want to do anyway because he told you something about the synchro rings. Like your ability to investigate the condition of them was somehow uh, only possible if you removed them. I don't know. But he talked about how difficult it was to get this bearing out or that the bearing at the top is no longer available, so we have to be careful. I'm not sure what that means. How much for that? Well, you haven't yet begun to move this shaft up far enough, so I would say you're going to get a slight bonus by using that piece of wood because it's going to act a bit as, as a bit of a proxy to hold the needles from falling in. 
but not a complete proxy. I didn't notice they had a tendency to fall in from this side, but of course, you know, who's to say? I would say fewer vibrations is good. If you can just push it up by hand, that might be better. But it's going to need to come up probably, I don't know, four or five centimeters. Okay. Keep going. That was almost one centimeter. Oh, I thought you said millimeter. Okay, that's fine. I'll get, oh, let me get you a I tiny. Okay, so now that's definitely far enough. Um, so we should start to see some needle roller bearing wear. So keep pushing it up a little bit now. Can you pull at all? Sure. Okay, so I can see the place where the needle rollers wore on it, and it's I just extremely gonna minimal. So I'm going to, can you hold that stick up a little higher? Okay, good. All right, I'm just going to take that picture right there. I just don't really see any kind of problems with it. It just looks fantastic. Okay. Okay, so put it down? come back down now, yeah. Now here, I've hit a hard spot. And to me, that says that there's a potential that bearings are going to fall out. So what you want to do is maybe run that wood in the... Oh, and then I'll just rotate this slightly and see if we can do it without dropping. That's not supposed to rotate. In service. Right. But I was thinking we could take advantage of the bevel that's on the front of it to kind of push the needles in place. Okay, okay. good. Coming down now. It's all good. Now you need to align it with the aluminum case, which may be, I don't know, whatever. You can probably just pound it. It'll probably just shove its way down. That's it, it's over the lip. So I'll just push it down now, don't let it fall. Okay, and then of course the clocking he talked about only will become critical once we put that front cover back on. We know it wants to fall. Sure, yeah, so just put this safety plate back on and then you're good. Wow, that was fantastic, really surprised and appreciative of how nice that was. A 52-year-old car and the transmission looks better than any I've seen in this of this vintage. Plus, usually these cars get beat really hard. People don't drive them with care. So one other thing I heard, although I didn't hear much on the stream, was something about um, checking the teeth on second and first and see if they're equivalent to first or fourth and third. Is that right? Yeah, the smaller gears. Okay, so I'll show you what that is. And we can watch a video on how transmissions work so you can have a better understanding if we don't end up taking this apart. Um, this bearing, I mean, it feels nice and tight. I'm just... I'm not getting noticeable play out of it. The only reason I would want to take the lay shaft down or out and the lay gear down is to withdraw that input shaft, which would allow us to see the pocket bearing. So if you remember this side of the, um, the main shaft here, the back of the main shaft has a, um, it has this little, whatever, nose that sticks out and then a bearing goes on the outside of that. The same is true on the front of the input shaft, or the main shaft, this main shaft here. It has a little nose on it, and it fits into a recess that's cut into the inside of the, the input shaft here, because the input shaft ends just shortly after it goes into the transmission. Mm -hmm. All it does is it has power transfer gear to transfer power directly down to the lay shaft, or the lay gear, and and then it's got a little small number of teeth that correspond to the what it actually gets engaged when you pull it into fourth. So because that shaft is so short, it tends to wobble a lot, especially if the, well, as we learned when we assemble the crankshaft into the engine and the, there's a bushing that goes in the back of the crankshaft and the clutch and the, the bell housing alignment, 
if the bell housing isn't perfectly situated on the engine, if it's like over by 10 thousandths of an inch or 20 thousandths of an inch or more, what will happen is the as you press in and release the clutch, the um, the input shaft moves in an eccentric fashion and it can really hose up the bearing at the front a lot. And it can also hog uh, the that there's a bearing between the nose of this main shaft and the recess in the input shaft. And when he talked about what they do to repair those, he said they machine, I'll use this one as an example, they machine this down and then they fit a high strength steel sleeve on it. Now Just obviously, like to fit a, like a similar diameter? Mm -hmm, as the original shaft would have been. Oh. Yeah. But this this one doesn't need that because it doesn't have any visible grooves, any any grooves that we can feel. And, and I would assume the input shaft is the same. The thing is that people do like a clutch dump, like they go first gear and then they dump into second gear and then sidestep the clutch, which makes the wheels chirp because they're racing some car that's properly more powerful. Um, what that'll do is it'll provide extreme slamming forces to press down on the leg gear, and that force is counteracted only by the tiny pocket bearing that's inside here. So you want to be really careful when you shift. Don't don't lurch the car between shifts because it causes that that uh, leg gear to just really want to be slammed down, and that that slamming function is what provides the push that'll destroy that pocket bearing. So, I mean, wishful thinking is a powerful thing, but based on what we've seen here, I really doubt that there's much going on that's bad in this tranny so clean the bearings feel really tight that like lace up smell yeah it just it looked really awesome um but this bag you want me to clean this at all the stick you could wipe it with lacquer thinner maybe so i'd like to listen to what he said on the live stream and hear what his advice was on the tranny and then um decide what to do next. What are your goals? I like to drain the differential. Okay. Well, I know Mommy wants to go on a walk, so maybe we could do some diff draining at the same time as the as we're walking. This thing over and get it draining? Yeah. Alright. Um, we can do this a couple different ways. We can just manhandle it. It's not too heavy to deal with. Should we lift this up? At we'll all? manhandle it. Well, we can lift this down. So, one of the ways we could. Forgetting it's a lift. One of the ways we could do this is we could put some jack stands underneath the. Um, what are these called? The splined hubs when it gets close to the ground and then it'll just be on a rotating thing we can lower the lift a little bit rotate around and lift the lift back up does this does this turn in that side it is there is a great video made by chevrolet in 1937 or something that talks about how a differential works and it's a series of levers and is the smoothest I'm feeling the oil is in here? Uh, I feel a little bit of a gritting, like a like a bearing is grinelled, like it has depressions, regular depressions. Oh yeah, there's like pop, 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 pop. Now, that could also be the spider gears on the side as they interact with the um, carrier gears. But there is a smoothness. Tell me more. There is a smoothness. What do you mean? Like, you, it, it feels fluid. Like okay. you're not just turning a. I'm just. I'm just saying what I'm identifying is that there's fluid in there. That there is fluid, and it's 
interacting with the chat? Um, probably. I mean, the bearings on this are, are pretty chunky. They're out in the outside here. And then there's going to be bearing in there. Um, when we get the rear cover off and everything, you'll be able to see how it works. Uh, and we'll just inspect the condition of the gears, inspect the condition of the bearings. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll change out this front seal because it sure looks like it's been leaking. You know, if you draw a line here, it looks like it's had some fluid come down. Now, on old English cars, you could be seeing transfer fluid from the front of the car coming to uh, contaminate this. But the fact right. that the, the front flange is not wet mm -hmm. and this is wet indicates that you've got a leak out of the front of the pinion, which is totally normal on an old car. Okay. So that's why we got that seal as a part of our initial kit parts. Okay, so if you want to um, get the lift down, then I will grab us some jack stands. Okay, these will provide us the opportunity to support the lift, the uh, spline shafts. And then from can there, leave this here? you can leave it there. Yeah, probably move the trash cans because it's going to go down quite a bit. Okay. Um, do I need to do anything with the tab? I still don't understand what needs to happen with these. Okay. Um, so when you're going down, you want it locked? When you're going down, you, you, well, there's a series of teeth on a rail yeah. inside. And those affect and those like move it slightly intermittently. And that rail is fixed. And as the, as the um, carriage goes down, there's a little a pawl. P-A-W-L that sticks out from the carriage and it if it touches one of those teeth it'll mechanically stop the carriage from going down any further so the control that you have with that tiny lever is to either extend or retract those little paws now if you if you allow them under spring tension, they're going to automatically extend as a safety means. So, so once they're locked into the rail or the rack, it's not possible to disengage them without relieving the preload on them. Kind of like the um, parking brake on the truck. You can't pull that little yeah. handle out, so you have to release the preload it's a very similar mechanism so you need to release the preload on those on the pawl because the the pawl is holding tight into the into the tooth on the rack it's like an alligator tooth thing oh, unlock it. well you need to release the preload on it because it's jammed hard in there by the weight of the whole system it's forcing the lock to hold tight it might be easier if you just looked at it with a flashlight yeah. Did you get here? Um, so, can you put this on your noodle? Here. Oh, I can't move it. Stick this so on your head. It needs to go up or down. Well, it needs to go up or down. Well, that is true. So, stick your face in there and then watch what happens as you raise it. Okay. Oh, and it's sloped. No, it's not sloped. 
Why wouldn't it be slow? Well, keep looking at it as you go up some more. Go up six inches or something incrementally. And as you go up, you'll watch it drop into position once it clears the next tooth. You heard both of those go in series? Mm -hmm. They're supposed to go simultaneously, but weight differences between the left and the right can cause that to happen. So now if you retract those paws, they will not engage. Okay, so now you can go down and just, you'll see inside oh, there. Oh, I understand. Okay. How would you describe it with words? So just clear? Yeah. Or is there a good amount of clearance? What do you mean? Between the... The paw and the alligator tooth rack? What's paw? P-A-W-L. It's that thing that sticks out, that slips into the teeth on the rack. It's like an oven mitt. An oven mitt. Okay. I'm trying to make female comparisons so I understand. I gotcha. Hang on, just a second. I'm gonna, I'm gonna raise these up a little bit, and that way we'll have some a little bit more height. Of course, now that I did that, I don't know how high they are relative to each other. So let's see. Can you just count the notches. I could count notches. Twenty inches. Twenty point five inches. What kind of standing is that? Oh, all right. Okay, go ahead. At some point. Moved a little. Yeah, I totally did. Hang on, let me uh, pick this one up. This. Okay, that should be good. Now, as the lift is unloaded, it's going to drop more slowly. Like when I had the MGB on it, I thought something was wrong because it didn't go down very quickly, but I'm comparing it to having Jaguars on there. How far should I go? Well, until we can rotate this thing without a problem. Maybe can you just. That's fine. Just move those doodads. Got a bunch of crap on the floor. Okay. That's now. great. Now we'll probably need to put something underneath the nose, like a crossbar, and that will make sure that when we set it on its bottom, it won't rotate. Although it might not anyway. Should I do something? So now let's just rotate it. Or I'll just rotate it. Okay, now roll it up. Or lift them up. Oh, a little bit of water. Good. That's sufficient. Water? Well, anytime you have like a little gooping loop, that's water or some extra viscous dirt or something. It's interesting, it's coming out two different colors. Mm -hmm. Sometimes entrained water will cause a milky appearance to oils. But I don't know if that's what's going on or not. Have you ever tasted it? 90 weight? I don't know. I just I don't like the way it smells. It's not necessarily 90 weight, it's maybe 80 or 140 or something, but I just call it 90 weight. What does that mean? Well, it's its resistance to flow. It's a measurement of viscosity. Okay. So, in, um, like when we get your car done, there's a damping system, and you'll learn about damping and dynamics coming up this next term. Yeah, we use a damping constant in one problem and we get the two. Right, so the damping constant relates to the viscosity of the damper, of the fluid used in the damper. Um, it's sort of analogous to springs, a spring constant, mm -hmm. except it's related to velocity instead of to position. We used it as um, as, an, as the, a third experiment with a spring that um, has an index of 
stamped in the okay. in water. Oh, all right. So then the water is the medium, and mm -hmm. you know you could have you could increase the velocity based resistance by putting like a paddle on the end of it or something. And so the velocity, the uh, viscosity of the fluid is its resistance to flow, and it's roughly related to the length of the carbon chains that make up the oil. So a really short carbon chain, like one carbon, like methane, is going to be so um, slippery and lightweight that it's going to act as a gas. But something with 100, 150 carbons in its in its chain is going to be like wax or plastic. So when you get down to lower values, you know, 20 or 10 or 14 or something, those are going to be oils. They're going to flow over each other. Or like a sugar, well, we don't encounter it melted usually very often, but um, you get these long polymer chains, and the longer they are, it's like spaghetti. They don't flow over each other very easily. So the, the gear oil in here is long chains. So 90 weight is a pretty thick oil. You wouldn't want to put that in your engine because it wouldn't be pumped easily. It wouldn't flow easily through all the galleys. But as in a differential, it's... There's no oil pump in a differential. It's oh. managed by the flinging action of the ring gear rolling around in the soup. And so having it be extra thick is kind of a bonus because it comes out in big, I don't know, you've seen those girls where they dip their head in the ocean and they flick their hair back and you get this big swirl. That's what the oil is like inside the dip. It's real sticky. Well, that was fast and not very dramatic. It just tended to work. Let's see if we scoot this off of here a little bit. Let's change the angle. Now we might want to do it left to right as well because I think these tubes are, well, they're not filled with liquid and I don't even know if they're partially full of liquid because I've never taken apart a solid axle car like this, so I don't know. But let's see what happens. If I lift it up, does any fluid come down? Maybe or maybe mm. not. Maybe one kind of significant ish drip, but no stream. Significant ish drip, okay. Yeah, I'm not sure what the story is about these things. Oh, that might be a little. Might be a big. Oh, you know what you could do is use your legs, your super girl legs. I was using my super girl back. I don't know. Okay, well, we could just let it drain. Um, certainly, that's very black and gross looking, so that doesn't look like it's been changed recently. It's nothing at all like the experience we had in the transmission. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's it? Yeah, I gotta eat food now. Okay, I'm gonna go on a walk with Molly.